CataractCoach.com. Why didn't the double rexes work? This technique is supposed to prevent capsule run out. Like, come on, cataract coach, you tell us about this all the time. So here we have one guest surgeon going inside here, poking the center of the lens capsule. There we go, tripan blue dye is already in. A little more viscoelastic. And let's watch the technique here. There we go, nice baby rexus. This is the double rexus technique. There's your initial rexus. Now you can go inside and decompress the capsular bag. You're using a Simcoe cannula, aspirate out the liquefied lens cortex all around, nicely done. Rock that nucleus too, remember, tilt it back and forth and rock it so you get the fluid from behind the nucleus. Here you've been taking out a lot of the cortex. Look at the fluffy stuff, look at that, rotating nicely. So now for sure the capsular bag is depressurized. Now more viscoelastic, and now you can enlarge the capsular rex. So beautifully done here by our guest surgeon. So cutting the capsule, nicking the edge there, grabbing here with the forceps, and creating a second larger normal rexus. There it is, beautifully done. The double rexus technique. And you're saying, Cat Coach, yeah, you taught us that. We like that. We like the double rexus technique. Watch this one though. Poking in, lens capsule, there we go. Let's try it again, a different surgeon here, Dr. Tadanki. Now grabbing the capsule there, getting it open. Hey, looks pretty good, right? Get the double, here's the baby rexus. You're gonna do a double rexus technique. All right, and then let's decompress the bag again. There it is. Simcoe cannula again. Aspirate all this out, all right. Keep watching, keep watching. Aspirate, aspirate, rock the nucleus. Make sure you get all that fluid out. You really wanna rock, it, rock that nucleus because remember there's liquefied leather material behind the cataract in front of the posterior capsule as well. It's not just anterior, it's surrounding the whole endonucleus. But here, look at that good rotation too. That looks like a pretty good technique, very similar to the other one. Let's keep watching carefully here. So again, rotating it, rotating it, getting all that out, taking your time with the Simcoe cannula. Now, if you don't know, if you're a U.S. surgeon, you may not have a Simcoe cannula. This is named after Dr. Simcoe, and all it does is aspirates and irrigates at the same time, but manually. You don't need a machine. You can do it with a syringe. Uh, so here we go. Now more viscoelastic going inside there. Now going to barely nick the caps. You saw this, but oh, now what happened? Watch. Right there. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, now what? Now what are you gonna do? Why did it happen? Well, the bag was still pressurized. There was still some force pushing the nucleus up towards the anterior capsule. That's the problem here. So you can cut the other side and look, it ran out again. Now what do you wanna do? What will you do here? I like the idea of the cystotome, do some can opener stuff, that looks pretty good. So maybe tear that piece off. You gotta get a capsule open here somehow. Now, you may want to just can open the whole thing, right? That's a reasonable approach here because then it spreads out the areas where it's weak to a wide, wide area. There we go. You want to be able to access that nucleus, but why did it happen? And I think the answer is you still had some posterior pressure, some pressure there. Now, when we rotate this around, is there a liquefied lens material there? I don't know if I even see any. But now getting the nucleus up out of the bag, again, a reasonable approach. Because you don't want to put any pressure on this bag now. You've got it radialized in two different meridians at least. That can pose a problem. So now buzzing with a FACO probe, here's a, looks like a chopper or even a needle, if you will. You can use a needle for a chopper. And then just breaking this up into pieces and staying above the capsule bag. So the whole nucleus has been brought above the capsule bag, which I think is a, a good thing because now you're operating away from the bag. You're not going to put a pressure on the bag. You're not going to try to split the nucleus in the bag with that outward pressure that will cause the radialized areas to rip around to the back. Now remember, on cataractcoach.com, I've got a great teaching website with all this material. You want to learn about white cataracts? You can click on the category of white cataracts. You'll see 100 videos of just white cataracts. It's that good. Everything's categorized and indexed. I promise you will love it. And please always search that website before you email me questions. Thank you. So now, by manual IA, cleaning up the cortex, be careful not to grab the capsule. Because if you grab the capsule here, you can put some pressure on it. You can rip it all the way back. Now, nicely done, cleaning that up. Maybe we'll switch hands, get under that area too. Let's get this IOL going. Get, hopefully get the lens in the capsule bag. I think you can still put it in the bag, orient the haptics 90 degrees away from those two radialized areas. And that should give you good lens, uh, long-term stability of the lens. Now, this patient's gonna still be thrilled. Remember, the patient started off with probably light perception vision with that white cataract. So once you get the IOL in, you can actually go ahead then and you can adjust the capsule covering. So you can maybe do a little bit more capsule enlargement there. So here comes the lens, looks like going right in the bag, single piece acrylic lens. 
deliver, deliver, deliver. Nice and easy. Be very cautious in inserting this. I like the haptics. Nine degrees away from that area. That looks pretty good. Seal up the incision. Call today. Look, patient is happy. Fifth post-op day. Great vision. Very nicely done. Thanks for watching. Remember, always search the Cataract Coach website before emailing me. And you better check out the podcast, the best podcast in all of ophthalmology.